Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this video on process control in grain sand molding. I'm Sandeep Kulkarni from Dynamic Foundry Group and Mahalakshmi Metals Kolapur. Welcome you all to this mm -hmm. small video. Let us start the presentation. No shortcuts in the process control. In foundry, there is no space for shortcuts. It can lead to rejection, quality issues, and wastage. We start with supervisor's role before putting pattern on the machine. It is very important that supervisors plays an important role uh, even before the pattern is put on the molding machine. The role, the time he spent on the match plate and planning is very important and essential to reduce rejection, quality issues and wastages. First of all, he has to check planning sheet, that is PPC uh, sheet for which pattern is going to be next, uh, next for next planning. So it's very important. What he, under he should understand from that is critical to process parameters, which are the basic important process parameter needs to be controlled for that particular part is need to be understand by the supervisor and he should know which are the focus area he has to focus on that particular part. For example, he, there, there may be a pneumatic rhyming, there may be a, uh, some sort of sleeve, there may be uh, box height, there may be some chill use. So these kind of process parameters will be there which he need to understand and follow. Uh, he has to, has to verify uh, that pattern is ready, checked by pattern shop and it is cleared for molding. That has to be ensured. Hit code, logo and other information that is identification has to be verified. A down screw or sleeve requirement has to be verified along with core availability, proper dressing of core has to be ensured. Sand hopper needs to be empty out because during the pattern change, it will take another some time, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And during that time, if the sand remains in the hopper, it will get dried and that dry sand will come for the molding for initial few boxes and it will make molds dry, which can cause for rejection or quality issues. So he has to ensure that hopper is empty before uh, the la before the last box has been taken for previous molding line. We go to supervisory role. Supervisory role important in respect to core inspection. He has to make sure that whatever cores he are uh, coming and he has going to place in the mold are properly inspected, properly painted, properly dressed with having enough uh, uh, proper storage is there, proper core handling is there. Then he has to verify a mold inspection. That is first box inspection is important. Uh, there he has to see mold hardness vertical as well as horizontal has to be checked. It should be uh, uh, above 85 always. Air pressure needs to be controlled and uh, uh, achieved, it should be minimum 6 to 6.5 bar that has to be there. If it is less, then more, more hardness will be less. The ramming will be not enough and uh, there will be more swelling, which can cause dimensional issue, which can cause uh, shrinkage, which can increase the weight of the casting and may, many other issues will arise due to less air pressure and less mole hardness. So he has to ensure that. Pneumatic or hand ramming, if required, has to be uh, ensured. Uh, sand properties need to be verified whether those are in given range, for example, GCS, permeability, compactability, and moisture. Sand volume in the box has to be verified. We're going to see some slide on that in the later stage of the presentation. Jolting and squeezing time need to be maintained. He has to adjust the jolting and squeezing time as per the given control plan uh, for each uh, match plate. Squeeze plate size and uh, distance between squeeze plate uh, and box has to be properly maintained. Uh, do not use graphite powder diesel. It is very dangerous because it will hamper your surface finish. We have a specific slide on this also in the later stage of presentation. You can use the mold releasing agent instead of uh, using diesel, which will help you to get a, uh, not only mold release, but it will also help you to uh, avoid sand sticking and also not affect your uh, 
surface finish of the casting venting as per guideline uh, here uh, number of vents venting vent size need to be specified and verified and uh, he has to ensure that after venting the loose sand uh, remaining uh, near vent uh, near vent has to be removed by uh, putting an air so it is also important otherwise that sand can fall in the bo molding box and cause you a sand defect so not only venting uh, number of vents but vents uh, vent size and removal of loose sand is very important placement of chill densener and chaplet as required so it is very important to uh, see chills are properly painted it is uh, used after shot blasting and painting denseners and chaplets uh, as specified has to be used uh, sufficient pressure here that is if uh, sand height is uh, more sand height is required or jacket is required or box size need to be verified for maintaining sufficient pressure here for the uh, good quality of casting first mold inspection as i told you earlier is very important he has to verify uh, mold to mold or box to box contact he has to verify the uh, uh, after the closing of the box he has to verify the sand crush he has to verify if there is any crack available or any mold damage is there he has to verify during first mold inspection so mold breakage and damage has to verified uh, he has to also verify the pallet and pin bush. So, what your boxes you are using, it should have uh, bushes available properly. Uh, there are many times it happens that one or two boxes uh, doesn't have one or two bushes there, and still that box is running in the molding line and causing some is uh, issues of uh, forecasting shifting. So, Jahapar BM Apko Diktai ki kisi box me bush nahi hai, to you have to verify ki a box. The bush nahi hai, you have to mark it and keep it aside so that that box can be uh, replaced with good box or that bush can be replaced immediately similarly you have to check the pins and uh, uh, closing pins and uh, pouring pins as well uh, pallets needs to be uh, properly cleaned because uh, if there is a sand available or rough sand is available on the pallet the box pallet will not be maintained box will not be placed properly on the pallet and it can the, give you mold crack defect so pallet need to be cleaned properly uh, remove metal from the boxes to have mold to mold contact there are chances that uh, boxes must should have some uh, metal uh, on the uh, top surface of the box because of box leakage or during the pouring so if such uh, boxes are seen immediately that metal has to remove and then use those boxes otherwise there will not be a mold to mold contact as there will be a gap between two boxes due to that metal so this is very important core setting is an important thing you have, one has to see uh, mold to mold contact and uh, any crush is there during uh, core setting or during closing of the top and bottom half of the mold uh, then inspection of mold and core after closing as i told you first box and periodically uh, normally we do it for the first box but it is important to have such inspection periodically to see that whatever uh, molding we are doing is uh, giving us the right quality or not or is consistent quality or not so periodic inspection of all these things are very important clamping is an important thing because clamping will help you to uh, reduce uh, gap between parting lines so that your dimension accuracy will be maintained your casting weight will be minimized and there will not be any parting line flash on the casting which will help you in reducing dimensional inaccuracies so clamping is very important it also helps you in avoiding uh, metal spillage through parting line or we can say uh, box leakage so it is important clamping is an important activity in clamping you have to verify that uh, the same pressure will be applied from both sides and same tightening will be done at both the sides if one area there is a more tightening and other area there is a loose tightening then uh, there, there are chances that uh, metal can uh, come out from other side of the box and there will be box leakage which will uh, results in a, a short pour casting or it will result in a flash which will uh, result 
in the dimension inaccuracy at the end. So it is very important. Pouring time and knockout time is also very important. We have to verify what is the pouring time for the treatment, what is the pouring time for the box, the knockout time, that is time from pouring to shake out has to be maintained. It should be minimum 45 minutes. Declamping time is also very important because after uh, pouring, uh, it's, you should wait at least 30 minutes for declamping. If you do declamping early, then what, what will happen? There will be a uh, box lifting will be there because uh, metal is not fully solidified. And because of that, there should be some uh, uh, lifting of box and it will uh, create a metal at parting line or dimension increase across the parting line. So declamping time is also very important. Uh, collect spillage from poured boxes is very important. Otherwise that spillage or that uh, balls, metal balls will flow to the sand plant and then to the mixer and it will damage your mixer. So it is very important to uh, collect spillage after pouring from the box through magnet. Uh, return sand temperature is important to understand what is return sand temperature. Based on that, you have to adjust your moisture and you can maintain your compactability and sand properties accordingly. Sand cooler uh, is important. Do not avoid sand cooler uh, bypass because if sand cooler is bypassed, then not only sand will become hot and it will look, uh, take more moisture and all the issues will start arising in the casting, but it will also not to suck the dust, which is important, uh, uh, we can say function of the sand cooler. So uh, once it is not uh, uh, not take up take out the dust particles, your dead clay will increase, and again moisture will be more. It will suck more moisture, and all these again quality issues will be there. So sand cooler bypass is to be avoided. Uh, Verify and validate sand additives percentage coming out. Uh, from the hopper into the mixer because many times we have some uh, uh, some PLC uh, reading there. Uh, we have adjusted it say 5 kg bentonite and three, 1 kg coal bond. But actually uh, 4 kg bentonite will be there, 2 kg coal bond will be uh, putting there. So it will hamper your sun properties. So you have to validate whatever uh, adjusted uh, Sand additives on the PLC and actual sand additives getting added in the mixer has to be validated. Sand weighing in the mixer is to be uh, validated as well uh, to ensure that whatever sand additives we are adding are adequate in uh, percentage with respect to sand weight. So it is very important. It will also in, uh, ensure that whatever mixer efficiency is there, we are utilizing that efficiency to the maximum. Moisture adjustment to meet desired compatibility. So moisture has to be adjusted with respect to your return sand temperature and get uh, desired compatibility based on the uh, atmospheric temperature and the return sand moisture. Mixing time has to be uh, verified. It is normally uh, set at uh, set once and it has been followed continuously, but you have to verify whether the mixing time which has been adjusted is being followed or not. Then phase sand addition needs to be done on the boxes or separate uh, through separate hopper in the mixer as uh, per your regular practice. And then most important thing is you have to verify your casting peel off because casting peel off will give you idea how much sand is going out from your system. And if more sand is going out from your system, you have a trouble of uh, having less sand volume in the system. So you have to verify that lesser sand will go outside your casting. So casting peel off is important. Casting peel off is important with respect to short casting time, your surface finish, your uh, casting surface finish is also depending on casting peel off. So it is very important parameter of uh, your process control. Uh, now we go to some of the best molding practices through pictures. Uh, this picture is basically for uh, during the ch change in pattern, you have to verify that hopper should be empty. As I told you earlier, it should be empty. If there is uh, some sand inside the hopper, uh, time taken for change in the pattern and uh, start of new pattern will be a little high. And then during that time, that sand will get dry. And once that molding has started, the moisture will be less and your casting 
uh, will be rough, mold breakage will be there, and you will not, you will not get enough uh, good quality of casting. So you have to ensure that while changing the pattern, hopper should be always empty. Uh, do not use diesel uh, on the pattern. It will give you sand fusion or rough casting. So also do not use graphite in uh, more quantity or more, more, more graphite powder. Because of that, you will get casting surface finish bad. And one more thing to avoid bad surface finish is do not keep mold holding for more time. आप जितना टाइम मोल्ड को होल्ड करेंगे उतना ही आपका कास्टिंग रफ आने के चांसेस ज्यादा है सो ट्राई टू पोर इट एज फास्ट एज पॉसिबल सैंड कॉम्पैक्टेबिलिटी इट शुड बी 39 टू 44 आई हैव मेंशन हियर बट इट शुड बी इट मे बी 37 एज वेल बिकॉज़ इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर एटमॉस्फेरिक टेंपरेचर और एक्चुअल टेंपरेचर एट द मोमेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू योर सीजंस और विंटर or it, it may be summer or it may be rainy depending on that it will uh, depend it will also depend on uh, your casting uh, criticality and casting uh, weight as well so you have to uh, maintain sand compatibility as per your control plan you can say uh, do not keep moisture more it is very important high moisture will give you sand fusion and casting roughness uh, you can see uh, at the bottom we i have shown you uh, return sand temperature from sand cooler it uh, in this picture you can see almost 50 degree uh, sand temperature is dropped from inlet to outlet so you have to verify what is your range in the sand cooler how much uh, is the maximum uh, sand temperature at inlet area and what should be the maximum temperature at uh, outlet area that you have to verify at your own uh, this will show your uh, efficiency of sand cooler it should be very efficient so that maximum temperature will get dropped during the journey through this uh, sand cooler and it will get uh, sand with uh, lower temperature or cool sand that will help you in getting better quality of casting. You have to adjust jolting time and squeezing time accordingly. This is very important. Supervisor need to focus on this area. This, what is the jolting time and squeezing time? uh given in the control plan or quality plan or work instruction he has to maintain it so that you will get enough mold hardness uh as as i told you earlier also sand additives and sand weight has to be monitored and ensured you can see here and in the plc it is showing 2.5 1.1 and 550 kg uh here i have shown you uh, one example of how to validate you can see here 3.5 kg bentonite and 1.8 kg is the coal compound the sum is 5.3 so you can see the uh, actual weighment you can see 5.364 so it is it is matching so you have to verify the, like this uh, your sad additives uh, additions actual discharge versus actual plc adjustment so you have to verify that and uh, validate it air pressure it is very important it should be always more than 6 to 6.5 bar you have to verify it uh, recently we have made one uh, uh, plc adjustment where we have uh, put a switch on our molding machine where it can it can uh, off machine whenever the uh, air pressure drop below six uh, bar it will automatically close down the molding machine the molding machine will not run afterwards uh, when your pressure drop below six so you can do uh, uh, okay -okay like that or you can make this kind of arrangement to ensure that air pressure at low air pressure molding will not run uh, these pictures will show you maintain distance between box and squeeze plate that has to be maintained. Uh, take enough sand above box so that your uh, squeezing will be better, your mold hardness will be good and uh, most importantly that squeezing plate will not damage your pattern and uh, will not re rely on your box and will not uh, damage your pattern. So you have to take enough sand above box to get uh, good mold hardness and to avoid damages of the pattern. Check mold hardness vertically and horizontally. Uh, horizontally, it is very important to maintain that mold hardness. 
uh, this, this is a work instruction for uh, uh, chill management. Chill management is a very important factor, I thought. And uh, many times it has been not followed properly. So this is how the chill management needs to be uh, done. There are a few important tips for that. First is uh, use always short blasted chills. Do not use wet or uh, oily chills. Use uh, fresh short blasted chills only. Uh, apply chill coat. A uh, chill coat uh, needs to be added with thinner in 1 to 1 ratio. Do not use water to dilute chill coat. It is very important to add only thinner and the ratio should be 1 to 1. Uh, heat painted chills to bring it to room temperature and use uh, chills at room temperature only. Do not put hot chills in the mold. This is very important. So what not to do is number one, do not use unshot blasted chills. Do not use wet or oily chills. Do not use water in chill coat. Uh, do not use rusty chills. So these are the some important points regarding chill management. Uh, use 100% uh, proper short blasted chills. Do not use un un similar work instruction is also uh, it's here. Uh, if chills are not used with respect to uh, chill coat and uh, fresh short blasting and all these things, then there, there are chances that you should get uh, blows like this. So you have to ensure that uh, chills are used in a short blasted condition and after chill coating. Uh, one more thing, do not use uh, uh, worn out chill. You have to ensure the life of your chills. So for that, you can put some number or some month code on the chill to ensure, uh, to understand or to get the traceability of your chills, when the chills are produced and how many days I am using it. And after a certain time, say three months, six months or one month, depending on the uh, no, uh, number of times the chill is going to use. You can destroy this chill and introduce new chills. So it is very important to avoid use of uh, worn out chills as I shown you in the below picture. Worn out chills will give you blow holes, give you shrinkage tendency, increase your shrinkage tendency. So replace chills as and when required. For that you have to maintain some kind of traceability. So work on that. Uh, in chill management is also important that after putting the chill in the mold, you have to clean area around the chill because there will be some loose sand around chill. So you have to clean that area and uh, uh, you have to uh, blow some air to, our, to get that uh, loose sand from that chill area. So it is very important that uh, around chill area has to be cleaned properly before you close the mold. Uh, this is another picture showing that sometimes we are using some densener or chapless. The location has to be properly uh, maintained. It, ha it has to be properly actually put on the some. There should be some something on the pattern itself so that people will not get confused about the location. Some uh, you can put some letter or something like that where where they can put that. Uh, Chaplet or chi or chaplet or densner so that there will should not be any confusion. I've shown here one example how it can be misplaced and it will not give you uh, desired result. It will give erratic results and the purpose of using those chapl chaplets or densner will not be served. Uh, use pneumatic rhymer for proper rhyming where required is very important. Uh, do not close uh, broken molds. It will be a, it is like a, you can say a crime to close the mold with the broken uh, cavities. So do not do that. Uh, ensure when you are, you are closing the mold, first with inspection, ensure that all the area of the mold is uh, properly uh, covered and uh, it touches each other. If it is not touching each other at that particular area, there will be some gap. There will be uh, a metal or a flash will become and it will give you dimensional inaccuracy and it will hamper the uh, dimensional accuracy. It will also hamper the weight and it will give you swelling and during machining will face some issues. So it is very important to see that molds touch each, each other, there should not be any flash or swelling across the parting line. Uh, 
next one is mold closing so you have to ensure that mold closing is parallel both ends it should be go uh, uh, parallelly down there should not be uh, one end and another end because if uh, the it is not uh, parallel then there are chances that uh, mold will get crushed and there will be a sand and extra metal as well so jab bhi mold closing karenge dono taraf se ek jaisa peti niche jana chahiye it is not going like that isme ek chances hai ki koi mold ghisne ka ya tootne ka chance hai extra metal la sakta hai ya fir sand gir sakta hai so it is very important to uh, have proper skills and proper coordination between two uh, molders who are closing the mold uh one more thing is important here is the pin should go across uh, full way down in the drag box also so that uh, it will be having uh, proper closing agar pin chhota istemal karenge aur wo puri tarah niche ke bottom box ke niche uh, bottom box mein nahi puri tarah nahi jayengi so there are chances of shifting as well so mold closing should be done properly with proper skills uh like i told you in the initial uh, points that while clamping you have to ensure that clamping tightness should be equally from both side if it is not uh, equal from both side there are chances that uh, mold leakage may be there or uh, dimensional accuracy uh, will be less because of casting swelling so ensure that both end clamping should be tight equally uh all parts having core you need to have a proper uh, gassing that is venting is always there but you have to in, uh, ignite the gas as well uh, uh, you have to ignite gas because if it doesn't ignite the gas uh, there are chances that gas will uh, remain inside the mold cavity and there may be a chances of blow hole so try to uh, put uh, proper ignition of the gas as well non removal of filters will give you uh, in if is sufficient feeding because that filter will uh, block the feeding efficiency of the uh, sleeve so it is very important to uh, take out the filters immediately after pouring so the full efficiency of sleeve can be achieved after pouring around 30 minutes clamp has to be uh, removed or declamped it is very important if it has been uh, taken early then there are chances that casting swelling will be there and uh, there will be uh, more more height of the casting or dimensional inaccuracy across the parting line spillage collection on the boxes need to be monitored and it has to be done so that those uh, clashes or the balls of metal will not flow along with the sand into the mixer or into the uh, bucket elevator which will damage your uh, entire system so it is very important to collect those spillage uh, put fresh sand on the poured boxes put knockout boards as well to ensure knockout time is meant, um, monitored and maintained fresh sand will help you in reducing your dead clay and also help you in uh, maintaining your uh, sand distribution as well it will also help you in uh, reducing your uh, sand temperature so it is very important uh it has been uh, said that if fresh sand is not added on the box uh, you can give instruction to your uh, shake out operator to stop the uh, shake out so that uh, the boxes will not go without uh, fresh sand to the ahead so the control will be there or some uh, some uh, you can say some uh pressure will be put on the uh, operators to put uh, fresh sand also and after putting a fresh sand only you can uh, remove that break and again knockout can be started similarly uh, it is very important to follow all the instructions given the process parameter work instruction or quality plan or control plan uh, are to be maintained process control parameters are very important and uh, those will help you in reducing your rejection and give consistent quality as well so do not take any shortcuts in the process control uh it's important that pin has to be removed before before box is come for shake out uh, if pin is not removed and box will uh, box come at 
shake out there are chances that uh, box will get stuck into the shake out and it will hamper your production it will make a breakdown so it is very important to uh, stop the shake out if uh, pin is not removed ask them to remove the pin and then take that box for the uh, shake out so it is very important that shake out person should be aware of uh, importance of uh, re uh, removing the pin as well as uh, putting up a press stamp. So these two things he has to understand and if both things are not done he could he should go for the stop stopping up shake out by putting a break and uh, once it is uh, implemented then only he can allow those boxes to go for shake out. Then you have to verify your uh, casting pill offs sand pill off you can say on the casting and uh, verify that it is uh, within your limit or it is tolerance and uh, it is good as well because uh, your if your pill off of the shake uh, sad or casting is not good then there are chances that uh, rough surface finish will be there more short blasting will require more finishing work at fiddling shop and uh, definitely it means your sand properties are not as uh, required because if uh, pill off is there then there should be something wrong with your LOI VM. So you have to work on the sand properties as well. So this will help you in improving your sand properties. Uh, while doing shake out, try, uh, check that all the sand inside the uh, casting cavity is uh, totally uh, removed. There, there are chances that many times the sand from uh, inner cavity or deep uh, drawn cavities are not removed. And because of that, your hopper level get uh, down and down and you are facing the low volume sand issues in the system and which will hamper your sand quality, sand properties and casting quality at the end. So it is very, very important that ensure that the sand is uh, removed from the deep down uh, cavities at shake out. So check sand sticking as I told you earlier also. Uh, sieve storage is very important while uh, uh, if you take some uh, sleeves for your production, ensure that all the sleeves are finished. Uh, if some sleeves are remain balanced, you have to ensure that it is kept properly with uh, proper wrapping of uh, paper, uh, plastic paper or bubble paper like that. Do not keep sleeves in the open air. It will, uh, it will get uh, inefficient uh, in feeding. Uh, it is just like biscuits. Our we can we pick, uh, open the packet of biscuit and keep it in the open air for some time. It you will find that it will become soft. It will not remain hard as well. So similarly, your sleeve efficiency will go down if you keep that those sleeves in open air. So try to keep uh, sleeves in uh, proper packing. Uh, this is another example where you can make uh, many people are making mistake. Uh, they are forget to put uh, filter inside. So uh, sleeve is there, but filter is not put. So it will not uh, do the filtration job. All the metal will go inside the mold without filtration and slag defect will be there or inclusion we can find after the machining. Similarly, filter is put, but it is vertical. It is not horizontal. So from the both side of the filters, metal will go down into the mold and uh, without fil proper filtration, the metal will go and again you will find lot of inclusions after the machining. The correct way is to put filter properly uh, in a horizontal way so that all the metals will go through the filter and uh, proper filtration will be there and you will not find any inclusion or any impurities after the machining. Uh, remove sleeves from bro broken mold is very important. That sleeve have, uh, is having a huge cost and if you uh, broke say five bolts so five sleeves will wasted if you are not taken it out at the uh, right time so it is very important after the mold breakage you have to ensure that all the sleeves have been taken out from the mold and uh, reuse those sleeves for next box so that uh, the wastage will be uh, wastage and damage will be avoided so this kind of uh, scenario has to be avoided a lot of sleeves are wasted here. A lot of sleeves are been broken here. It's a total loss to the company and the, to the organization. So try to avoid these kind of things. Thank you very much for patient hearing.
and hope you have learned a lot through this presentation and thank you thank you very much